Okay, we are ready to start. So today, what is Cambridge English approach? What we teach in the fast changing world? Working with Cambridge materials, challenges and benefits? Some takeaway activities and resources. So what is Cambridge English approach? Uh, you can see a slide with a lot of text, but the main idea of uh, the updated Cambridge English approach is where your world grows. This is the main point of all the Cambridge materials and Cambridge methodology, not only to teach English, but also to make your world grow. And we can read here that to learn English is to enjoy and experience a language that opens up opportunities across the world, which means that teaching language is not just teaching the linguistic part of the subject, yes, but to open up the opportunities for students to build confidence, to build their, to master their life skills, uh, to master their abilities to think, to uh, manage their emotions, to be digitally literate and so on. So together with teachers and our partners, we are here to engage and inspire millions of people throughout their entire learning journey. We can uh, we help them confidently prove their skills to the world. And we're talking not only about language skills, but also communication skills, which are a little bit different. We can be experts in linguistics, but still be not very good at communication. And this is what Cambridge materials teach. First of all, communication and ability uh, to be understandable to other people and ability to understand other people in return. We believe that language is at the heart of being human and English can unlock a lifetime of experiences. We help individuals everywhere connect, communicate and come closer together. So this is the main idea of teaching English, to help people come together all over the world, to be able to be on the same page and yeah, to, to be human, uh, to be open to others uh, and to, well, communicate. Our unique approach meets the real life needs of everyone we work with through uh, inclusive and accessible products and services. There's not just one thing that helps us do this. It's a combination of listening, collaborating and partnering with our entire community that shapes what we do, which means that we always start working on new materials, designing new materials, considering the needs of the teachers. So it means that when we uh, adapt Cambridge materials to Ukrainian reality, uh, we make a survey, we research, we look what teachers need, what they require on their lessons. Uh, and of course, we meet the requirements of the new Ukrainian school concept. This is how we adapt our uh, materials. So Cambridge uh, English suggests a learning journey like no other. What it means? It means that Cambridge approach is unique and there is nowhere else you can get this experience, but only um, designed by Cambridge, which suggests the most modern um, insights on which it bases the books, insights in pedagogy, in psychology, and uh, in many other fields, in sociology and culture studies, uh, all together comes in one entire book or a course book. Setting the standard means that all the uh, course books are very uh, accurately aligned with CFR, which is Cambridge European Framework of References. And we're trying to reach the standard of the European Framework of References with our materials in a very accurate uh, way aligned on each step of uh, the language journey. 
a world shaped by research and insights. I already mentioned that. And growing together means that we do listen a lot to what teachers want and we do improve our materials according to their needs. Now, in the heart of uh, all the new Cambridge materials, we set the cognitive control functions. Why this is important? Um, it is likely that language learning has the potential to help develop students' cognitive control functions effectively while they are exploring the new language. New language sets the new mindset in, uh, in people's brains and how we approach it means a lot in building a personality. And it, there, there is a, a lot of research telling us that um, bilingual people uh, have much better cognitive control functions, uh, their memory works much better, their creative processes are much better, uh, and uh, their flexibility is much stronger. So people who know more languages um, become smarter in terms of their cognitive processes as well. So this is important to build uh, to build a positive mindset about learning English. We will just revise a few things from the previous webinar. Uh, we were talking about these functions separately and we had some exercises uh, for each of those. If you are interested, you can watch the recording. But as of now, uh, revising cognitive control functions. These are working memory, inhibitory control, and cognitive flexibility. What are they? Working memory is the ability to hold information in mind so that certain tasks can be completed. Uh, and we do that from lesson to lesson, developing the range of working memory. Inhibitory control refers to the abilities to focus attention and control our emotional and behavioral responses, uh, which is the core of building this positive mindset about the language. And cognitive flexibility is needed for solving problems and enable students to look at issues from different viewpoints. So this is about creative thinking. Now, how cognitive control functions influence our life. I will stop here a little bit longer uh, and I will show you this triangle. This is the uh, triangle of how any, um, any belief uh, is built. So we have a situation, we somehow act feel and think about this situation. And uh, according to, uh, to the research in psychology, the thought is what comes first. And this thought can be planted in childhood with a significant adult uh, and follow the person throughout the whole life. Uh, this thought will define the feeling of this person that happened uh, according to this thought, uh, as, as um, feedback on this thought. And the feeling will define actions of this person. Let's look at the example. Uh, if we have a situation in the classroom, a student is making a mistake, what we uh, tell to the student and what is our attitude will define the thought. And if students start thinking, if he's making mistakes, I'm a bad student, then um, there might be different feelings, but I've put here the feeling of shame. And the feeling of shame leads to the action, closing, uh, closing up from any kind of communication. And it's not only about another language. It's also about their mother tongue. So when we, uh, when we set, when, when we plant this thought in a student, um, it leads to this circle and it can follow this person throughout the life. How we can change it. Yeah, even if the student with such a thought comes to the classroom already, how can we change it? Uh, we need to change the thought, which will lead to changing feeling and action. Uh, 
So uh, if the situation, again, is making a mistake in an exercise, in tasks, uh, just during the lesson, the thought should be that this is a learning process. This is how learning process is done. It's hundreds of mistakes when you finally learn something. Then uh, it should lead to the feeling of motivation to overcome this mistake uh, and to make new mistakes, which is also fun. Uh, and from motivation, it leads to trying again using the experience they've gained while making this mistake. So uh, by changing this mindset, we create a new mindset, uh, which is much more productive. And this is the one that will follow the person throughout their life. And, and this is much more productive in any field. And if we are talking not only about English language, but all the problems in um, language barrier, in the lack of confidence of students to speak, come from the thought that was once planted uh, by some circumstances, another student or previous teacher or um, any significant adult. So our task is to start changing this mindset as fast as possible before they are, I don't know, 40 years old and still think of the themselves as bad students because this thought is created and it circles and it uh, it's really hard to get rid of it you can actually try this exercise on yourself make a triangle and think of a situation um, and a thought you have about yourself in this particular situation for example uh, the situation is uh the world is changing and it requires new teaching methods and my thought would be okay i'm too old to learn some new methodology the methodology we had works well the feeling uh i don't feel motivated right i i feel stressed when i think of making changes my actions keep teaching the way I've always been teaching. But if we change this mindset, yeah, the world is changing and the thought would be, so I have to change to adapt to this world. And then we feel motivated and then we have another action plan. Uh, and these could be just life situations. Yeah, uh, for example, you come into the room and everybody's laughing, yeah, the situation. Uh, what do you think first? What's your first thought? I come to the room, everybody's laughing. If this is a thought, um, whether it's a productive thought or a destructive thought about yourself. For example, uh, in this situation, I come to the room, everybody's laughing. I would think, okay, something is wrong on me, with me, what's wrong with me? And then I feel shame, and then I feel closing down and losing confidence. But if the thought would be, everybody's laughing, so someone just made a joke, and I feel curious, and my action would be, hey, can you tell me the joke? I also want to laugh. Yeah, so the different mindset um, actually uh, works, can work productively for all of us. And this is what is in the core of Cambridge methodology, building the productive cognitive um, process in the classroom. Ways to improve cognitive control functions through ELT. Uh, so there are uh, there are four main um, ways. These are activities enhancing cognitive control functions, uh, and I will show you two um, uh, two activities today. For um, th they are more about classroom ma management, uh, but these are activities for primary students and for secondary students. 
and using uh, self-talk to enhance cognitive control skills. Uh, the rest three will be discussed at the next webinars, but just briefly about them. Using self-talk is about setting the goals. We, uh, it is very important on every stage of the uh, learning and teaching process to set the goals together with students and for students, because we know our goal. Our goal is to reach um, A2 level in the sixth grade. For each lesson, our goal is to cover this much materials. Uh, and for students, we need to set goal in a different way, uh, which is something connected to their real needs, real interests. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, we will learn how to describe your friend, uh, which is very simple. And from that, we will play the game. And in this game, everybody has to guess um, a person by describing this person. Yeah. Uh, and this is a simple activity when um, one student closes his eyes uh, and uh, he shouldn't look at the classroom. And we're choosing another person in the classroom and describe, okay, uh, this person is wearing glasses, this person is wearing red sweater, this person is wearing. Um, green shoes who's this and the student has to guess yeah so this is a simple game and if we set the goal on playing this game students will be much more motivated so um and our task is also to make this voice not just our voice but students voice yeah what i want to learn from this lesson how exactly i want to have fun at this lesson uh, then whole class motivational interventions aimed at developing self-control strategies to create a can-do classroom culture. This is something we will look at today. And developing study strategies and metacognition. Uh, again, this will be discussed at the next webinars uh, because I, I really want to cover everything, but uh, um, yeah, it's impossible just in one hour. Uh, whole class motivational interventions aimed at developing self-control strategies to create a can-do classroom culture. This is uh, something really important, uh, and this is the the last and the um, the most valuable word of Cambridge methodology. Can-do statements uh, should be at the core of our teaching because students need to understand what they can do, uh, how they can use the language, in which situation. And we need to build this confidence together with the skills in the language. Uh, and this is the problem of the whole class. For example, let's have a look at such a, um, such a, widespread problem as I can't speak English problem. And this is something, uh, especially in the first grade. Yeah, I can't speak English. No, it's, it's fine. I will keep using Ukrainian uh, or, uh, I don't know, Moldavian, Bulgarian, whatever the language uh, students speak. Uh, but I will keep using this language because I can't speak English. I don't know how. Yeah, because they haven't learned anything. But it is strange to explain this to, uh, to a first grade students. Uh, so, in this activity, uh, we will work on students' inhibitory control, which means their uh, emotional management and their behavior accord, um, towards the subject. Then um, the objective here would be listening, speaking, or creative writing, depending uh, on uh, uh, on which stage of learning you are. Yeah, if it's in the end of the year, it can be even creative writing, uh, or it's <clears throat> if it's the second or the third grade. Uh, materials needed: just your phone, uh, and I will show you some more materials. And it takes. Uh, eight, ten minutes, but actually depends on the class. Uh, 
Now, procedure, P procedure. Challenge your students to ask them how long they think they can speak English without using their mother tongue. Take out a stopwatch or uh, use the stopwatch on your phone. On three, one, three, two, one, go, start the watch. As soon as somebody uses their mother tongue, stop the watch. Uh, and you can make this record every lesson. Uh, now, once uh, once you stop the watch, you look how much time is there, for example, 25 seconds, uh, and students, if they have skills already, uh, mastered skills already, they can write it down. Use a sign saying our world record in speaking English. Uh, it can be even a class poster. Uh, write time taken on a sticky label or just write it on the paper and fix this sign. Stick the sign with its label up to the wall. So uh, if it's happening in the classroom, students can see in front of themselves how they progress from lesson to lesson. Yeah. So at the first, um, for example, uh, in, in the first months, it was 25 seconds, then later, this number will grow and they will see how they progress. Carry on using the stopwatch to measure how long the children manage to speak English only. Make a little ritual out of it. Whenever a new record has been achieved, praise them and update the level, uh, the label. From time to time, when the students have achieved a particularly good record, celebrate uh, with them and tell them how they have amazed you. Very important, very simple thing, but something we very often forget to praise as, uh, as much as you can when students really achieve something. Because <clears throat> as I remember in, uh, in the times I was studying, um, we uh, teachers only paid attention to mistakes. And when everything was good, uh, it was just uh, taken for granted, right? And uh, this, again, this um, builds the mindset for a person. Whatever you do, if it's good, it's taken for granted. And when you make a mistake, you are noticed. Uh, it builds the wrong mind mindset. And I will show you um, what... Uh, what we can do, for example, I have the box of different strange stuff here uh, and a jar. So uh, when uh, students, for example, hit the goal uh, of um, 40, 40 seconds, I take this mm, shell and put it in the jar from the box. So this is the achievement of this lesson. The next lesson, okay. Now it's 45 seconds. I take this bowl and put it in the jar uh, until the jar is full with all the items I've, uh, I've collected, yeah? So whenever student, uh, students reach um, better and better goals, we fill up the jar with all the, uh, all the shells and whatever we put there. Once this box is emptied and the jar is full, it means we reached the whole the goal we set. Yeah, for example, speaking English for five minutes nonstop in the classroom. Uh, and uh, uh, that's that's a super goal for the four, fourth grade, actually. But once you have this motivation system, uh, students can reach their goals faster and better. Okay. Um, and how cognitive control is progressing through Supermind's Ukrainian edition, for example. Uh, here you can see draw in your notebook, ask and answer. Uh, your favorite animal for you, and I write it in English. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, for example, zebra, a lion, a parrot. For your friend, and to learn that, we need to ask our friend and do it in English. So the question would be, what's your favorite animal? And uh, the friend is answering. 
what's your favorite color? And we can continue this survey. What's your favorite clothes? What's your favorite um, subject? Uh, and make, make this survey uh, longer so the conversation is longer. And in such exercises, we can use these pebbles, stones, uh, shells, to put them from a box to a jar uh, and say to everyone, well done. Now, in secondary school, there is, um, I will show you a very, very simple uh, thing. I'm sure you might have used it already, but still it's good to remind that this actually works and worked with my students every time. For example, uh, the class for the last three weeks, uh, you have been handing in on average 75% of the homework assignments, yeah, which is very low. If we can raise that percentage to 90% for the first three days this week, then Thursday will be a no homework night. Yeah, so uh, we use a simple system as is used in any workplace these days we uh, we ask our students to hit the target uh, which we set and if we do this there will be a reward reward for example a no homework uh, i would of course um, tell them that there will be a very interesting project that doesn't require writing or reading too much uh, but something they are interested in uh, but this can be also no homework night and such simple thing can make your um, class much more productive at some point, but again, uh, if, if, for example, your students have only 40% of homework assignments handed, handed out, uh, handed in, uh, then you raise it to 60, 70, 80, 90, and you try to hit 100%, and by that time you uh, celebrate it somehow with all the students. Now, when we look at um, uh, prepare Ukrainian edition that has a lot of exercises um, that develop students' cognitive control functions, this one can be um, this kind of assignment uh, as a reward. Yeah, in small groups, make a poster about protecting animals. Uh, choose an animal. Is it a pet or a wild animal? How, how big it is? And they just discuss and make up this uh, project um, you know, all together if they work in the classroom if they work online they can uh, they can create a board uh, on uh, some a padlet website or something like that in um, okay uh, so this is um, yeah this is project task from prepare ukrainian edition and i will tell you a little bit more about uh super minds ukrainian edition and prepare ukrainian edition as the parts of the competition um from the um yeah a, a, a parts of the competition between the books uh this is super minds ukrainian edition uh, and uh, you can learn more at publishing linguist ua uh, and uh, you can also learn more uh, with the life hacks at Linguist UA website. And there are wonderful, um, wonderful articles on Osvita UA and New Ukrainian School uh, Portal. Uh, also, we have articles on our resources where, where you can read uh, more about these materials. Superminds today was chosen as one of the books that will be um, working in the school libraries, that will be sent to the school libraries uh, and uh, supplied by the government. So I will tell you, I will remind you what is Superminds. Uh, if you've chosen it, um, every unit starts with a key vocabulary presented through uh, story and personalized activities. There are always big question uh, tasks that 
actually personalize these uh, this vocabulary uh, and every lesson has the cognitive control uh, development tasks for example here draw your family and name your family uh, also personalizing the vocabulary and um, uh, <clears throat> drilling the spelling uh, through interesting drawing activity. Uh, all the songs um, are on the third lesson and they are fun, informative. They consolidate all the grammar and vocabulary students learned in the lesson one and two from the unit. Um, lesson four is more grammar. And you can see here the task with the penguin. Uh, this penguin is responsible for all the grammar videos, uh, which you will find on the public linguist website um, they uh, it's it has free access uh, and uh, yeah whenever you meet the video in the book the video sign in the book uh, this is defined by the penguin and such a sign with a triangle in a circle uh, you can go to the linguist um, publishing linguist website and find this video then uh, there is a story after each uh, new grammar and vocabulary. Uh, so lesson five and six is a story, more cognitive control functions uh, development. Uh, and some think and learn lesson with projects and revision. So uh, super minds is fully um adapted for the new ukrainian school requirements uh, and those teachers who uh, chose it are welcome to um to try it out and give us their feedback now prepare is another book that we are preparing uh, for the sixth grade and the selection of the books for the sixth grade is uh, coming in March and uh, it all will be done soon um, and you can still choose prepare for your uh, schools these are 20 units in five blocks one block is four unit plus culture section and life skills section with a project you've seen one of the projects uh, review and every unit has tests vocabulary grammar references and extra activities at the end of the book uh, and again, vocabulary is given through the context, and it's always vocabulary and reading. So here you can see vocabulary, grammar, and a communicative task at the end of the uh, of this section. So these are two lessons: vocabulary lesson, grammar lesson, uh, and pronunciation is also very important at this stage for students. So uh, we have a lot of pronunciation tasks in the course book. Uh, how the vocabulary is given? It's always um, a playful, uh, playful way to learn it. Uh, and we start with personalizing the topic through the video, for example. And here, if we're talking about technology, uh, in the video, students look at different um, different types of technology, uh, think of themselves, how they use it, where they use it, uh, what kind of technology there is. And then there uh, is a matching activity where students need to match pictures with words, uh, and that's how they learn it in the context already. Then there is a text and exercises to the text. And if we look at the exercise three, here we can see um, read the facts about technology, write K if you knew the information already, S if the information surprises you, W if it worries you. This is a very important type of tasks, and um, such tasks will be met throughout the whole course. Uh, they are 
uh, if we're talking about reading, this is the first um, getting familiar with the text, yeah, and uh, finding finding just general information in terms of linguistics. But in terms of life skills, we are developing our attitude to the topic, we're developing our mindset to the topic, and we do not read for the sake of reading. We read for real reasons. Because um, when we read in real life, we read because something surprises us, because something worries us, like news or like the topic we are researching as experts in this topic. Uh, and if we already knew the information, we mark it and we just... Uh, <laughs> swipe it right uh, and that's what we teach our students these skills in reading which are not just reading beautifully but reading for a reason of course it goes together with reading beautifully but we need to change the focus now um learning uh, is personalized in such uh, in such tasks uh, and there is emotional management i'm thinking about what surprises me and what worries me and why and digital literacy in this particular topic because it's about technology um okay in prepare ukrainian edition we have inductive grammar learning where students um observe the language they look how language works and they are trying to figure out the patterns on their own and make a discovery in grammar that they will use as a rule uh but of course um referring to the rules there is a grammar reference at the end of the book with all the tables and extra uh, grammar practice. But in the book, uh, the idea of grammar is to learn it uh, through observing the language on my own in the text, how it works, and then putting it together uh, in the exercise. And in the end, uh, grammar learning is not only about knowing the formula of the language, but also using it at once and using it for a reason. And uh, grammar is very much aligned with critical thinking and logical thinking. And here is an activity where students need to use grammar, which is superlatives, um, comparatives and superlatives, and um, compare different phones uh using the table which is analyzing data right so that's where critical thinking and grammar are combined and of course it's interesting for students because phones is something that might be interesting for them now the history of computers is the text inside of this unit it has engaging really engaging stories that can really surprise students with how the first computers were created uh, and uh, uh, there are interesting questions for example computers can now do a lot of clever things but are they more intelligent than us why why not this is a question I would uh, also discuss with someone and I often discuss with someone because this is the topic that is really relevant these days and all the texts in all the talk topics in prepare Ukrainian edition are taken in such a way that is relevant today. Now, uh, yeah, there are engaging stories and relevant um, vocabulary that students can use in their real life. And then all the knowledge they've gained during these four lessons in the unit, uh, they put together, for example, for a class survey that can also be um, taken to the online format. Uh, so this is a computer survey. Students need to ask all their uh, colleagues and analyze the data. This is again, a good life skill. 
Uh, and the final task here is a writing task where students need to write an email to the computer service, which is also a great life skill uh, for them, even in their mother tongue, but also in English, uh, in English language, because nowadays uh, many companies are international companies and if they have problems with the software they would need to write something to the international office uh, to solve this problem so this is a, a real skill it's not an email about how i spent my uh, summer holidays it's a real email that requires communication so, so this is a task about online communication which is aligned with the on, um, digital literacy life skill and when we're talking about the assessment, it's done in um, several ways. First, it's throughout the lessons. There are exercises at the end of the book with extra activities where students need to, um, to talk about something. Yeah, they have some cards and a uh, very step-by-step -step explained instruction. Uh, and then there is this email that consolidates all the learned material. And there is a project uh, where, again, students need to um, work on the project together and then um, uh, evaluate themselves. So this is the part of formative uh, assessment. And uh, the main part of formative assessment is in prepare would be the review pages uh, and here you can see um, students revise vocabulary learned throughout five units uh four i'm sorry four units vocabulary grammar listening reading speaking and in this particular case there is no writing because we already evaluated their writing in the email i showed you uh and yeah, you can choose prepare Ukrainian edition for your uh, class and um, remember that this new methodology uh, is really aligned with the relevant processes in, in contemporary world and uh, students of today are the, uh, the future that <laughs> we invest into and uh, that's why we need to build their positive cognitive mindset uh, and keep track on their attitudes and behaviors towards uh, towards the way they learn and towards the way they uh, percept the world and we can help them build their confidence in a much stronger way than our teachers did in our time so yeah, that's it from me. My name is Tetiana Shalepko. You can see my email. If you need extra uh, information, you can email me. Uh, more information about our course books uh, for new Ukrainian school are is here at Publishing Linguist website. Uh, and information about Cambridge English at cambridge.org and also sign up to our Facebook page where you will find a lot of information uh, and news uh, from the company. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer those. So I'm going to the chat. <laughs> 